Now, if you're in grad school or on your way to grad school, you've probably had somebody suggest that you do an annotated bibliography at some point in time. But I bet that they didn't explain to you what exactly is an annotated bibliography. And even more so, I bet they didn't explain how to even do one. So today we are discussing what is an annotated bibliography and how to do it in four different ways. So what is an annotated bibliography? Well, it's a list of readings that contains detailed descriptions or summaries to help the reader readily understand or recognize each reading's significance and what it's generally about. So with that definition, there is no one perfect way to do an annotation. And that's why I'm presenting four different ways. What's most important is that you have an annotation that serves your purpose and helps you as the reader recognize the most important information for whatever project or study that you're engaging in. So when I was preparing for my comprehensive exams, I had four different committee members ask for four different types of annotations. So if you are in the stage of developing an annotated bibliography, if it has to be reviewed or approved by a faculty member, make sure that you ask them specifically what they want to see or what they think is most important. But if it's just for you, then do the annotation that works best for you. At the end of the day, you want to be able to recognize the most important information so you can quickly and efficiently do whatever research project or exam question that you need to do. So these four different types of annotated bibliography aren't like a standard or a set way or official way to do annotated bibliography. Instead, these were just requests that were made of me as a student from my faculty members and they ultimately were really helpful when I was preparing for the exams. So they don't have an official name or anything like that. So I'm just going to kind of make it up as I go. So the first and the easiest type of annotation would be a quick annotation, or again, what I'm calling a quick annotation. Essentially what a quick annotation is, is a quick and simple summary of what you just read. So you're using your very natural language. You're reframing the main statements or arguments into your own words. So when you go back to reread this annotation, you immediately can recognize what this was about and what about it was most important to you. So this annotation is really explicitly for you as the graduate student or as the main reader to really kind of pick and choose or highlight the most interesting or important parts of the reading to you. So looking at my example of a quick annotation, I'm going to look at The Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon. And the first sentence immediately is just a summary of what it's about, right? So I'm saying that he is presenting an explanation as to why independence and revolutionary movements in Latin America were unsuccessful. Then I go on to talk about his main arguments, but again, instead of using very academic language, I'm using my natural tongue or how I would speak. So I talk about some other things that may be you know, relevant to my research. And then I end it with kind of his conclusion, again, in my own words. And then I present some examples that I think might be useful for me in my research. But again, quick and dirty, maybe five to six sentences, pretty relatively short, but it's about me understanding why I care about this reading. So the next annotation then is what I'm calling a formulaic annotation. And this is where you're picking out the same exact aspects of every reading so you can kind of think about where they belong against each other or with each other. So using this formulaic annotation style, every sentence has a very specific purpose. The very first sentence is the main argument or the thesis of the thing that you read. The second sentence is the methodology or how they demonstrated or presented their argument. Then you want to think about any uh, body that was excluded or main concepts that were excluded and then what concepts or main theories or ideas were centered. So basically seeing the gaps within this reading or uh, the areas in which they really succeeded or did well. Then the next sentence would be your critiques that you have about this reading. And really it's interventions or critiques because if you really love a reading, you can also use this sentence to talk about what's so wonderful about it. But you also want to be aware of where it could improve if you are creating a reading list so you can compare it to other readings as well. Then your final sentence should be the relevance to whatever you're preparing for. So relevance to your research topic, relevance to your exam question, relevance to your own personal interests. 
And so that type of structure helps you, again, readily or quickly identify how this reading pairs up to other readings on your list. So, for example, looking at mine, which is the museums and the epistemology of injustice, I start off with his argument, right? First sentence, he argues contemporary museums are still actively engaged in violent colonial practices. Then I say how he does that, right? So Wada presents this argument uh, by unpacking messages, stories, and ideologies being disseminated by exhibitionary and collecting practices. So that's his methodology. He's really talking about these arguments and he does this by analyzing exhibitionary and collecting practices. So then I go on to talk about who's he centering or who's his main like focus of this article. And he's really talking about centering indigenous perspectives. And that way you can really honor here the other's voice. So that's what his main focus is about, is really thinking about the indigenous, the native, the center of the local community or local land that you're on. Then I go in with my critique. Um, while he presents an unconvincing argument that decolonization is not a physical practice, but rather intellectual practice, he closes his argument with a list of actions uh, museums can take towards the epistemic violence, right? So I don't actually agree with what he says in that statement or in that main argument. And I'm writing that in there because I know I'm already thinking about other readings like my friends Fanon list or, or reading to help me understand, okay, these are kind of in competition or in tension between each other. Then my next sentence is, this work is relevant to my research as it, and then I describe what is most important. And then I summarize my research. So my research deals with the ways in which Afro-Indigenous ways of knowing can decolonize the museum. So I'm again, connecting the idea of indigeneity. I'm connecting the idea of uh, epistemological work. So the intellectual work. And so in that way, this formulaic annotation really helps work you through your th thought process as you're preparing to make your list. I really love the uh, formulaic process because it doesn't take a lot of brain power to write it. You know what you're trying to look for for every reading. And then when you're reading other readings, you know exactly what sentence or area in the paragraph to go to if you're trying to remember, oh, but do they agree? Do they disagree? Are they in conversation with each other? Whereas the more quick summary or the quick annotation is more about jogging your memory about the entire purpose of the reading or what you liked most about the reading. The next annotation I call the argumentative annotation, which is funny because I think the faculty member that gave it to me would totally not like the word argumentative, but it's just a really easy way to think about how this structure or how this annotation is structured. So while all the other annotations are about describing, this one's actually demonstrating an argument. You are kind of arguing as to why this reading deserves to be on your list. Your argument is also trying to demonstrate the value or the significance of this reading or the areas in which this reading fails to do something. So you're really kind of making a value judgment on what this reading is doing well and what it's not doing well. And again, this is to help you compare or put it in conversation with other readings within your list. So the first sentence of the argumentative annotation would be your main claim, your argument. So it has to be a strong statement using a strong verb that can be proven or disproven. And this is important because in your next sentence, the second sentence is going to be the proof or the evidence that your claim is valid. So what this looks like within an annotation, I'm saying that the author succeeds at implicating researchers in scientific colonialism and presenting a counter model to current social science research ethics. That's my strong claim. Somebody can say that they that she does not succeed at implicating researchers. But for me and what I research, I do think that she succeeds at it. Then I present my strong proof or my evidence. She demonstrates that researchers perform the same violence as colonizers by expecting access own and ownership over the experience, knowledge, and histories of the research community. So my proof is really supporting the claims that researchers today are participating in colonial practices. And those colonial practices are, you know, access and ownership over intellectual property, intellectual knowledge, and then having control or the right to disseminate that information and then benefit off of it in some other way. And basically, once you have that down, you repeat it. So then the next sentence is another strong claim that you think is important about this reading. And then you want to present more evidence and more proof. 
What's unique about this particular annotation style is that it's really declarative. You know why you're reading it, what's important, and how it is in conversation, or how is it going to influence the research that you're going to do, because you've given it a lot of thought. These are all kind of mini essays. And because of that within here, you can also quote or cite the reading. So when you go back to do whatever writing, you know exactly where you got those ideas or why, where those important thoughts or quotes came from. So if we're looking at the bottom, I'm talking about how uh, Chalisa presents a series of ethical Afrocentric practices and most pertinent to the construction of my research methodologies are her values of transformative research healer, page 11 and the importance of agreement, consensus, dialogue, and particularity. So again, I'm talking about how this is relevant to my research. That's how you would end this instead of a conclusion or a summary. You'd make your strong claims and then say, this is all important to me, or this is the most important part to me, and explain how or why. And you never really want more than five or six sentences with any of the first three annotated bibliography examples. And again, this is just to remind you why you care about these readings how they will support you and then using these quotes or using these uh, citations to help you remember how to read the reading instead of having to go back and reread everything for this one particular very sp specific point. So this is most useful I think to me when you are in the writing stage and for my exams in particular, it was super helpful when I was like, oh yeah, I know I care about this one thing. I set it in here and it's like, oh, page 17 is where she talks about this. I can head back to page 17, reread it, and then go from there. You can also take direct sentences from this annotation because the way it's written is so specific and argumentative. And that was also very useful for me. When I was feeling like my brain was fried, I could copy and paste direct sentences from my annotated bibliography into my exams. And it flowed really, really well because of the style and the structure of this uh, type of annotation. And so in that way, it has a lot of versatility for the writing stage of your uh, project, whatever that is. While the first two are more about your thinking stage of your project. Now I have a video coming out next week all about how to write a literature review. So if that interests you, definitely subscribe. And if you're interested in more grad life, grad advice, and everything research, that subscription button is there for you too. If you found at least two of these annotations useful, hit a thumbs up. And as always, if you have questions, suggestions, or just want to say hi, leave them down in the comments down below. Getting able to talk to you, your likes, sharing my videos really, really helps a small YouTuber like me grow. So thank you so much for your engagement. I really appreciate all of you and I will see you next week.